To understand Krishna is not easy. This Krishna alludes to elsewhere in the Gita by saying, Bahunam Janmanam Ante Gyanavan Mang Prabhatite Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahat Narsadur Lavaha. After many, many lives, one who is endeavoring for knowledge, someone may come to the realization that Krishna is all in all and thus surrender to him. Such a great soul is very rare. There are many such verses. Brahma Samhita, also Lord Brahma describes. Panthastu koti shatavatsara sambhragam yo vayora tapi manaso muni pungavanam so pyastu yat prabhada simya vinchincha tatve govindavadi purusham tamaham bhajami to understand Krishna is not easy even for the great yogis who over many thousands of years perform very difficult austerities, control their breaths. Why is it not easy to understand Krishna? Why is it the yogis, by such a method, they cannot even approach to the tip of the toe of his lotus feet? Because he is avichintya tattva. That is described here in Brahma Sanghita. Avichintya tattva. Tattva means a principle. So, Krishna is avichintya tattva, means, chintya means something which can be understood with the intelligence or the speculative powers of thinking. Vichintya means, if one has very great powers of thinking or understanding. So, avichintya tattva means a subject which even by uh, very elaborate mental processes cannot be understood. Avang manasa gochara, in the Upanishads also, it is stated that that absolute truth is beyond the power of the words or mind to reach to. So then you may say, well, why bother at all? Just like this rascal, so-called Chinmayananda, though he was absolutely uh, Jaraananda, but he had such a big name, Chinmayananda. He used to say, well, Krishna is black. Krishna means black. Black means unknown. So you can't know him, so why waste your time even trying to rascal? Krishna is giving scriptures so that we can know him, but not simply by a mental process. Just like in, this, in the university, in the western countries, you may do a degree in Hinduism or Indology, South Asian studies. And you'll find scholars, they can talk so many things on Gorya Vaishnavism. But they, they can talk so many things. They can talk about mm. comparing uh, Vishishtadvaita Vada of Ramanuja Acharya with Achintya Bhita Vedvad of Jiva Goswami, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is the difference between Achintya Bhita Ved of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Bhita Ved philosophy of Bhaskara Acharya? They can give you all the different analysis and they'll talk how, what the different Acharyas are discussing about impersonalism and personalism, but they don't have any understanding of Krishna. For them it's just a subject. Just like some people study the mating habits of fish, some people study electronic systems for nuclear missiles, and some people study Vaishnavism, something to study. You teach it in the university, you get a degree. Of course, they may have some appreciation, but they do not understand it, because they have taken the wrong method. Simply by amassing much knowledge, you cannot know. This is called the ascending process. Arohan, avarohan. Ascending process, descending process. Just, just like if you want to climb a mountain, very difficult mountain, some mountains you may see, generally you think a mountain slopes up like this, but some mountains they, they lean over, so if you're trying, you're climbing backwards like this. Almost impossible to climb up. So, someone may, just like if someone climbs Mount Everest, that is considered a great achievement. You can also go to the top of Mount Everest by taking a helicopter. So you can also say, somebody say, I've been to the top of Mount Everest. Oh, I have to. I went by helicopter. In other words, if something comes from down and pulls you up, then you can go very easily. To go up by your own method, even to climb Mount Everest may be possible. But to understand Krishna is not possible by the ascending method. Only when His mercy comes down. In other words, by the process of devotional service, when He is pleased with us, He can reveal Himself to us. Just like... How can a beggar get to see the king? It's not possible by his own endeavor. But somehow or other, if the king becomes merciful to him, he says, bring him here. Then he can come into his presence. 
So Krishna, to understand Krishna is very rare. Krishna doesn't, that is one of the factors of devotional service, pure devotional service mentioned by Rupa Goswami in the very beginning of the nectar of devotion. Sudur Labha, pure devotional service, there are six qualities, six factors by which pure devotional service is recognized. Uh, first one, Klesh Agni. Anyway, we won't go through all of them. One of them is uh, Sudur Labha, very difficult to obtain. Even if one has the lifetime of Brahma, if he performs yoga or studies different books, if he doesn't get the mercy of Krishna or his devotees, he cannot understand Krishna. And that mercy is not very easy to get because to get that mercy, one has to be very pure and sincere. We see Markandeya Rishi, he is an example of someone who achieved devotional service simply by performing sadhana over many, many millions of years. Millions of years. And there are others, like Gajendra, who was an elephant. He wasn't a scholar. Although he had, from his previous life he had to know some verses. He wasn't a scholar. He wasn't a philosopher. He wasn't a yogi. He was an elephant. Going in the, in the lake to enjoy some fun with his girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, somehow or other, Lord Vishnu, he remembered Lord Vishnu in the middle of the danger, in the in the lake, and he became fully Krishna conscious. Kajendra Moksha, that is described. Eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, how to get this very rare gift? This Krishna is explaining here uh, in Bhagavad Gita, he's explaining the topmost knowledge, how to attain him. Now he's saying to Arjun that only among thousands and thousands of people they can understand. So it doesn't sound very encouraging. We're preaching all over the world. Please become Krishna conscious. Oh yes, well, how many people have become Krishna conscious? Well, out of thousands among men, someone may try. And out of thousands who try, hardly one can know Krishna in truth. And they say, well, right, forget it. Well, uh, I'll just go to my McDonald's restaurant and have a hamburger. Why should I worry about <laughs> Krishna consciousness? Or maybe I'll be a, a good person. I won't go to McDonald's. I'll go and get a soya burger from the... Uh, from the veggie restaurant. I'll be a good materialist. Uh, wet stool, dry stool. But uh, why should we... That you find, actually in Buddhism you find, at least in Thailand I was there for some time, this, uh, this path of becoming... The, the goal of life is to become nothing. What is your ultimate goal in Buddhism? To become nothing. Not a very attractive goal. Everyone's trying to be something, but in Buddhism you try to become nothing. Even in Krishna consciousness we try to be something. We try to be the servant of Krishna. So their goal is to become nothing, and the, the method to achieve it is also not at all very relishable. You have to do many austerities over many lifetimes, and sit like this, and look at the end of your nose. So the, neither the prospect which is to be attained, nor the method of attaining it is very relishable. So they just become gross materialists. And if you tell them that my dear Mrs. Buddhist, or whatever it may be, Miss Buddhist, that uh, you're very fond of eating pigs, and in your next life you'll become a pig. You say, well, that's all right. It's okay. It's another kind of fun. I'll enjoy life as a pig. So if people don't have a transcendental prospect which they find attainable, then they're likely to become gross materialists. This is one of the problems of Mayavad, is that the goal is not at all relishable. Simply you become a light. Your, your goal of life is to become a light bulb in the Brahma Jyoti. And the process to obtain it is also not very relishable. So people just give it up and become gross materialists. So we may think the same thing in Krishna consciousness. Only after many, many lifetimes, very few people can become Krishna conscious. But Krishna also says, even before this in Gita, Krishna has says, Bahavo jnana tapasa puta madhava madhataha. Many, many persons in the past, Bahavo, by knowledge and austerity they have become purified and they have attained to my nature. So it seems to be a contradiction. What is the contradiction? Actually, many people have come to Krishna, uh, but then if we see the whole population of the universes, the number of the jivas who are conditioned is infinite. So, if we take a portion of infinity, that's also <coughs> infinity. Many, many. 
numberless conditioned souls have been delivered and numberless are still rotting here. So our choice is to be, which side do you want to be on? You want to be on the this side of the Virajar River, the, the material world, or that side in the spiritual world? Can you sit like this? I have a problem with my feet. No. All right. Or do you want to be in the spiritual world with Krishna? We can go to Krishna. If we can't go to Krishna, then we're just wasting our time. What are we doing here with our tilak, our neck beads, chapamalas? We're doing this for a purpose. It's not simply simply to waste some time. Many people think many people think that who will become a devotee, who will become a sadhu, who is a failure in life. You know this? Many people say because you're use, because you're a useless person, therefore the only means you have to fill your belly is to become a sadhu. So actually it's a fact. The only people who come to Krishna consciousness who are failures in material life. Actually everyone is a failure. Everyone is even the Aditya Birla, he, is, he was considered a success, but now he's a failure because he lost all his money by death. You know this Aditya Birla, head of the Birla group of companies, recently died. So he was very famous, still is, his name is famous. He had so much money, but he lost all his money by death. So now he's a failure. He died the same as a rickshaw wallah, same bank balance. Right the moment before he died, he had crores of rupees. And the moment after he died, nothing. So failure, everyone's a failure. So by material circumstances, one may become, and his failure may become apparent more quickly. But one who's more intelligent sees that the whole of material life's a failure anyway. So why bother? Let me chant Hare Krishna and become spiritually successful. So, uh, who will become a devotee? Those who are more intelligent, actually. Those who are, it may be material failure. You may not get your BSc, PhD. You may not get a so-called good job. A good job means you work like an ass. And uh, you, you get 5,000 rupees. And with that, you have the right to call yourself, I am a higher class ass than those who are working in the factories. I am a 5,000 rupee a month ass. Whereas the others, they're only 2,000 rupees a month ass. So, this is failure. Actually, human life is spoiled if we simply live for eating and sleeping and mating and defending. Success means to become Krishna conscious. Or even if we try, nothing is lost. Even if you try, even if we make 1% progress in spiritual life, that is far more valuable than being Aditya Birla or Bill Clinton or any of these people. 1% progress in Krishna consciousness. If someone chants Hare Krishna once, that is more valuable than millions and millions and millions of dollars. That is a fact. Who will believe it? Those who have developed spiritual intelligence. This Narad Muni describes that one who is actually intelligent and philosophically inclined, he will endeavor for that goal which is not obtained even by going to Brahma Loka. Whatever you obtain in this material world will be lost again. But if you obtain Krishna consciousness, that is your permanent benefit. Permanent benefit. Therefore, Narad Muni is encouraging. Don't hesitate. Don't be afraid. Nowadays we hear many people, they say, well, what if I don't become Krishna conscious? And then maybe after 10 years I won't like it and then I'll have to go out in the material world and get a job. Maybe better I don't become Krishna conscious and I just get a job anyway. <laughs> but Narad Muni says, don't think like this. Because... If you even if you don't finish your spiritual life, even if halfway along the path, or even a little way along the path, you somehow or other circumstantially you fall away because as long as one is in the neophyte position, he can fall down at any time. And he can be bewildered by Maya and come back. He can come out of Krishna consciousness. So Narad Muni says that even if you give up all your material duties and everyone criticizes you and you still you don't make much spiritual progress, whatever you do spiritually, that is to your eternal benefit. But, on the other hand, uh, on that side you're not the loser. But on the other hand, even if you execute all your material duties perfectly, you gain nothing 
Nothing, nothing, nothing. You gain nothing. You only gain more trouble. Therefore, he's encouraging. Narad Muni is not a, he's not a sensible materialist. As the, he's, he's not a parent. He's not like parents who give you sensible, practical advice of this material world. Then, my dear son, I know you want to be Krishna conscious, but let's think practically. Narad Muni is thinking very practically that this material life is nonsense. It's useless. It's worse than useless. Get out of it. Take the risk. If you don't take the risk, how? what chance is there? You may be living at home very comfortably with your stereo cassette recorder and you have a nice 5,000 rupee a month job and a TV and a VCR and a, a motorbike, but that is useless. Because even now it's useless and in future what result you'll get from it is all useless. Simply, punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani jatare shayana. It's all... Ah, I've got a nice job, nice guy. It's all simply leading to repeated birth and death. Again and again and again. And again and again and again. On, on, on. Therefore, take the risk. Narad Muni is a bold preacher. He goes, Daksha's sons, performing austerities so that they can become materially nice, good, respectable, pious people. Narad Muni goes to them and says, Hey, you're nice boys. Nice, well-behaved why don't you become Krishna conscious? Forget what your father told you. Do all your austerities, fixing your mind on Krishna and go back to Godhead. Daksha wasn't very happy. But his sons went back to Godhead. So this, you may say, it's a risk. What will I do if I get older? Somehow, you know, maybe I'll want to get married or this and that. And what will I do? Well, maybe, you, maybe if you, actually, if you shouldn't even think like that. For a start, we shouldn't even think like that. We should better to think, now I've got the chance to be Krishna conscious. Let me go for it. Now I have the opportunity in this life to get free from birth and death. Let me do it. Let me try for it. But even if you think, well, what will I do in future, this, that? No, that's the wrong way of thinking. Just think. How to dedicate our lives to Krishna. And in future, even... Even if you spend 10 years practicing Krishna consciousness, then after that, you have to struggle in the material world. That means you have 10 years of Krishna consciousness. And then 10 years of Krishna consciousness followed by 30 years of struggle in the material world is infinitely greater than 40 years of relatively smooth existence in the material world. And anyway, there's no... What is the guarantee anyway? If, if you think, well, first of all, I should get a job and... I should get some, a nice university degree. There's no guarantee. There's so many people with university degrees, driving rickshaws, having pan shops, little shop on the corner of the street. And there are many people who are not educated. They, they have a big business, so many things. So even from the material point of view, that is all in Krishna's hands. Don't think like a materialist. This Krishna is teaching Arjuna. Don't think in your ordinary humdrum, mundane way. We should think this way. How to surrender to Krishna. And if we're sincere and serious, Krishna will help us. We should be captivated. Oh, out of thousands of among men, one may do. Let me try for that. Why not? And actually in this age, Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his mercy, that goal which is not normally obtainable, even in millions of lifetimes, Bahunam Jandanamante, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, take it. Just take it. Here you are, love of Krishna, take it. How to get, what do I have to do? Chant Hare Krishna. Follow these rules. Very simple process. What do you have to do? Rise early in the morning, attend Mongol Arati, chant Hare Krishna carefully, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, engage in Krishna's service, apply our minds to this process, and you'll go back to Godhead. It's, as Prabhupada notes in this purport, it sounds too easy. The yogis, or gyanis, they have to undergo severe austerities. They have to follow many, many rules and regulations. And what are we saying? Don't worry about so many tiny little rules and regulations. Chant, dance, be happy. Engage in Krishna's service, seriously. And you'll achieve the highest perfection of life. Higher, you'll get a better position than Indra, Chandra, Surya, Brahma. And these, uh, people are thinking, well... How is this possible? How is it possible? By the mercy of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is a special offer. 
special offer for people in Kali Yuga. Uh, we believe it or not believe it, we can see practically those who are engaging in chanting Hare Krishna, they, be, they exhibit all the symptoms of an advanced transcendentalist. Those who take to the path seriously. There's a great difference between chanting Hare Krishna and cultivating mature desires and chanting Hare Krishna uh, with only the desire how to surrender to Krishna. We see devotees in this movement, you can see two devotees. They've both been in this movement, say, ten years. And one is very mature in Krishna consciousness, very steady in his service, peaceful, self-controlled, enthusiastic. Another is uh, still hasn't got the habit of going to Mangalarti regularly, still uh, is a proclivity to talk all nonsense. He hasn't made much advancement. So the process is there. It's up to us to follow it, to apply ourselves. This is the meaning of yoga. Yoga, yoga, yukta bhavarjuna. Krishna tells us, put, put yourself into yoga. That means endeavor. It's not simply that by living in the ashram, that somehow or other, after some time, just by living, sometimes people think, just, I live in Vrindavan. Of course, there's benefit, no doubt. But real living in Vrindavan doesn't mean just that... Uh, you buy some land and build yourself a bungalow, put in an air conditioner, and uh, drink linkers out of the fridge. You get <laughs> spiritual advancement. Real living in Vrindavan means following in the footsteps of the six Goswamis. Now, following in the footsteps means we may not be able to sleep under a tree every night, but we should be serious. Prabhupada wanted this temple. <laughs> devotee, he said we should, our devotees living here should be just like Goswamis. Why are the, Goswamis, six Goswamis of Vrindavan, very serious about Krishna consciousness. Not wasting time. Not simply standing around talking, socializing, wasting their time. But engaging in Krishna's service. What service were the Goswamis engaged in? Nana Shastra Vichara Naika Nipuna O Sadharma Samsthapako Loka Nam Hitakari No Tribhuvane Manyo Shramya They were studying the Shastras but their aim was how to do benefit, how to help others. They were preachers. They were, and now we have so many imitation Rupa Goswamis in Vrindavan, but they should see that Rupa Goswami, his business, what is his business? Sri Taitanya Mano Bhishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutane Swayam Rupa Kadam Ayam Tadati Svapadanti Kam Rupa Goswami's business is to establish the mission of Lord Chaitanya in this world. And what is that mission? Prithivita Sri Taitanya Mano Bhishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutane Swayam Rupa Kadam Ayam Tadati Svapadanti Kam Rupa Goswami's business is to establish the mission of Lord Chaitanya in this world. And what is that mission? Prithivite Ache Jatanagaradi Gram Sabati Pacha Vibe Morana. That mission is spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So that Prabhupada noted that Vrindavan is our inspiration. But our real work is all over the world. So this we should know. How to become a Rupa Nuga devotee. Follow Rupa Goswami. To follow Rupa Goswami doesn't simply mean that one puts on some white cloth and it should be dirty. Especially he has a special qualification. People think to be a follower of Rupa Goswami they have a dirty white cloth. But uh, that is not the qualification. Simply by wearing a dirty white cloth you don't become Rupa Goswami. But by taking up the mission of following in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami, serving in his mission, as received in the Rupa Nuga Parampara, coming especially in the modern age through Srila Prabhupada, then we come in the line of the Rupa Nugas. That means Rupa Goswami, he is called the father of devotional service. He is the principal disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for establishing this mission. So those who are following in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami, they have to take up his mood, his mission. What is that mission? That we become purified by Sankirtan. Sankirtan means all together, not sitting alone in a cave. All together working to glorify Krishna all over the world. That is the uh, mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, how to get this mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially this mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, this comes by joining in his mission, preaching mission. Preaching, Prabhupada noted in one purport, 
in Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, that preaching Krishna consciousness is the easy way to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So how to become the one in a million? How to become the lucky one in a million? Aditya Birla. One in... Well, there are other rich people. There are few rich people in India. So there are a few among 900 million people. So you find every... So many small businesses, young men, they're starting now. In Gujarat, Bombay, Bangalore, different places, Delhi. The young men are thinking, how I can become uh, the future, just like Biala has been. I will be famous like that. They want, how will I become one in a million? Sports, training for sports. You'll find so many young boys playing cricket. And they're all thinking that I may be the future Sunil Gavaskar or something like this. Of course, he's already out of date. So, how to become a special person? Again, we have to say, there's not a special person to become an expert in hitting a ball with a piece of wood or amassing large sums of money or any other material feat. The really uh, attainable, the, the feat which we should try to attain, that feat which will take us beyond birth and death, that which will bring us to the ultimate goal of life that which will bring us to the lotus feet of Krishna. So how to become that, how to be successful in spiritual life, that Krishna is explaining to Arjuna and that has been explained in many books and that is explained by oral tradition also, but uh, has been explained in many books, especially Rupa Goswami wrote his Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Prabhupada said this is the handbook for all the devotees in Krishna consciousness what to do. And that is received in oral tradition also. That's like a guidebook, what to do. And then the guru teaches, or any senior devotee teaches, this is actually what you should do, how to put in practice actually. So those instructions are there, and anyone can do it. If to become a famous sports player, or cricket player, or millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, zillionaire, whatever, uh, that may require some previous karma. So many people are trying to be a millionaire, but only a few do it. And someone, they become become a millionaire just by complete luck, just like... Where was I reading that? So there was some beggar who was living on the street in Las Vegas. Maybe you heard of Las Vegas. It's real Maya Nagari. In the desert, in the desert in uh, Nevada, one state in America, they build a huge city which is based on gambling. And people go there and they spill, they spend literally hundreds and thousands of dollars. So there was a man living on the street, beggar living on the street there. They have beggars on the street in America too. Believe me. If you go to America, don't think the moment you walk in, the moment you walk through the airport, someone puts a million dollars in your hand. No. Rather, whatever you've got, they'll take it out of your pocket. That's how they become rich. So, there's beggars in the street there. There's one beggar on the street in Las Vegas for so many years. And one time, he, uh, he got a few coins and he was playing around on this, on this uh, what do they call this, one-armed bandit, one kind of gambling machine. You see, in America, they gamble. Everything's machines, even gambling. So, then he won uh, some millions of dollars. So, luck. Luck means he had some previous karma to become rich. But Krishna consciousness isn't like that. It's not like some gambling. It's not just by luck. Anyone who takes to this Krishna consciousness process and applies himself seriously, it doesn't matter what you may have been in your previous life. It doesn't depend upon your astrological position. It doesn't depend upon some, some kind of special <coughs> luck. Simply, anyone who applies himself seriously to this Krishna consciousness process, anyone can attain. One may be a very pious person. He may come from a very pious family. Or he may come from a very impious family. We see here in India, there are many pious people, who are they're even born in Vaishnava families, but they don't take the Krishna consciousness very seriously. And there are others who come from backgrounds which we wouldn't want to talk about, because it's not suitable for Bhagavad Gita class at all. And they take up Krishna consciousness very seriously and make significant progress and advancement. So Krishna consciousness, it's open to everyone. It may be that only uh, a few out of many 
achieve this success. But especially at this time, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, it's open to everybody. Every one of us has come to this movement, hopefully, I would hope we have come, for the purpose of achieving the perfection of life. And it's not, we shouldn't think that it's just for a few people. That Smita Krishna Maharaj is famous as a very steady, staunch devotee. Well, he's Smita Krishna Maharaj, but I'm me, and you know, he's great, and I'm useless. And I'll never... No! You can also become a great devotee of Krishna if you apply yourself to the process. Apply yourself to the process. Rupa Raghunatha Pade, Jaha, Jaha Mara Ash, is always asking for the mercy of the devotees. Not that I'll apply myself to the process. I'll make progress. I'll make advancement. Not with this attitude. Very humble attitude. That praying for the mercy of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and his devotees. And praying, please help me to advance. It's open to every one of us. Everyone who comes to this Krishna conscious movement can become a topmost Paramahamsa Mahabhagavad. Whether you are preaching all over the world, whether you are worshipping the deity, whether you are cleaning the floor, whatever service we are doing, uh, if, uh, if we apply ourselves to this process, gradually we can make progress and by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every one of us can achieve the perfection of life, which is giving up this body, never again to have to come back to this material world, but to go back home, back to Godhead, to live eternally, to serve Krishna in the spiritual world. So every one of us should should make this resolve. Let me try for that. It's not in our hands. We can't force. But we can try very seriously. We can't force Krishna. That now Krishna, I've been in this movement for 15 years and it's about time you did a dance in front of me. I didn't see you yet. What's the use? No. Not by force. But by very humbly, faithfully executing our devotional service. Even if we feel that, well... I'd like to make faster advancement, but somehow or other it's not going very quickly. Let us go on with our, very faithfully with our service to Krishna. Let us try to do something to help in this movement, help in this mission of spreading the preaching mission, whatever service we may be doing. Let us dedicate our lives to this, always being very careful to avoid offenses, chant Hare Krishna very carefully. The process is there. If we follow it, begging for the mercy of the devotees, then certainly Krishna will be merciful to us. That faith we should have. That is one of the symptoms of a uh, surrendered devotee. Rakshishati Devishmas. I have faith. Krishna will protect me. If I take to this path, certainly Krishna will protect me. Certainly Krishna will help me. So let us try for this. Uh, we can go slow. We are in Krishna consciousness. We can go slowly. We can go fast. We can drop out altogether if we like. The choice is ours. Best thing is to try to advance as much as possible. Let us try to become pure devotees of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Please. How did we end it up in this how did we come to this material world? Krishna bhuli si jiva nadi bahimokha tev maya tare deshom shantu. We forgot Krishna. Krishna bahimokha yon bhoga vanchu kare nekatha sta maya tare japati adhani. Becoming envious of Krishna, we came to this material world. Our original position is in the spiritual world. We have independence. If we misuse that independence, we come to this material world. So, we was in the material world. Yes, right. yes, our eternal constitutional position is in the spiritual world. But uh, once you are in the spiritual world, you never fell down. No, you fell. You fell. So if in we the go material back, world means we, have, we fell. If we go back again, hmm. uh, in, um, there is chance again to fall down. There's always a chance. There's always a chance. But that doesn't mean that we should be like a tennis ball going backwards and forwards. And go there and stay there. Always a chance means we have our independence. But it's up to us. 
Just like right now it's up to us. We don't have to be in the material world even now. We can be fully in Krishna conscious in one moment if we just decide to surrender to Krishna. Right now we have the same choice. In the spiritual world also. Generally, that's you don't choose the wrong way. But you, you may do because the Krishna has given us independence. So we may, we may use or misuse. But generally it's not misuse. Therefore Krishna says, Yadgadva nani vartante. Once going there, you don't come back. You have seen that taking birth in a rich family, mm-hmm. in the previous family, in the past family. Mm-hmm. So, then the people will do that, I will be sure I will more money than I will be sure. Well, people who think that uh, the success of life is simply to get a lot of money, they are certainly attracted by the uh, prescriptions in the Vedas of pious life. Veda Vada Ratha Partha. Those who are attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, they are attached to performing pious activities with the aim of getting a good result in future lives. But those who are more intelligent, they're not attached to such things because they know that even if you're born in a rich family, that that one thing is that richness won't stay with you. It won't last forever. Another thing is it won't bring you happiness anyway. Certainly by performing pious activities, you get a so-called good material result. But those who are more intelligent, they see that it's, it's not good any more than dry stool is better than wet stool. In the field, people pass stool. So, if you tread in that stool, it's horrible. If you tread in some stool and you see, oh, how horrible. But anyway, this stool was dry. So it wouldn't be much worse if it was wet. Anyway, it's stool. It's contaminated. So the same thing. We may think that uh, pious life is very good and sinful life is very bad. But as, as long as we're in the material world, of course, certainly sinful life is worse than pious life. But in this material world, everything simply leads to repeated birth and death. So neither of them are good. Are there any explanation why Krishna is black? You ask Krishna. He decided to be like that. That's how he likes to be. He's God. He doesn't have to explain to anyone. He's blackish. He has many different forms. In different incarnations, he's whitish, reddish, all different. Not explanation. No need of logical explanation. He's Shamsundha, blackish and beautiful. Any explanation why he plays on a flute? He likes to. Of course, it's good for calling the cows also. Why does he tend cows? Why doesn't Krishna like... Why doesn't Krishna have a a band of 200 dogs. He likes he likes cows. That's his choice. He's got it. It's up to him. That's his personal choice because he's a person. Just like you're a person, you have likes and dislikes, right? What kind of food do you like to eat? Idli. Dosa. So Krishna, he also likes different things. That's his personal choice. Shukta, shak, bhaji, Namita Kushmanda. I don't find in Bhatti Nod Thakur's song the pizza, soya burger, <laughs> french fries, tomato ketchup. <laughs> Krishna likes these things. Shukta, puris, ladu. So that's his personal choice. He's a person. One of the symptoms of a person, he has, he has personal likes and dislikes. So he's chosen to be like that. When we say black, it doesn't mean that he's like an Adivasi from the jungle. <laughs> he's Sham Sundar, very beautiful. <coughs> Any other question? Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kija.